since my last video where I talked a little bit about AGI soft photo scan, I've received numerous emails, comments asking about the differences between photo scan and photo scan pro. And in this video, I just want to demonstrate some of the things that I've learned over the past few weeks when messing around with PhotoScan Pro. Now, thank you to AGI Soft for providing me with a complimentary license to PhotoScan Pro. I'm solely using this for educational and research purposes, so I'm not doing any commercial work with this. If you want to do commercial work, obviously you need to pay for the professional edition. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as I've done in previous videos, I'm going to share the source images that I used in processing both for PhotoScan and PhotoScan Pro. There are about 90 of them, and you can see them here. I'll put a link below so you guys can feel free to check them out on Dropbox. And so what I've done is run them through both PhotoScan and PhotoScan Pro, and the coverage area is roughly 15 acres. You can see our thumbnail image pane down here. Now these are all the photos. And what you'll see first is that PhotoScan Pro looks very similar to PhotoScan. So this is PhotoScan and PhotoScan Pro. The main difference that you're going to find here is that in the left hand pane, you'll see that we have this ground control panel. And with all of these photos, they were actually geotagged by my Canon SX260 and you can see the latitude and longitudinal coordinates for each of the images. So if I turn on these images here, we can kind of pan through them and you can see over in this map pane that they're highlighted. So going back to photo scan, you'll notice that that ground control panel isn't there. We can definitely turn on cameras and see the different photos, but we don't have any sort of geo-referencing available to us in photo scan. With PhotoScan and PhotoScan Pro, you'll notice that these toolbar buttons are, are nearly identical. You still have your texture map, your wireframe, your dense point clouds, and your sparse point cloud. Now, the one difference that I'll point out in PhotoScan Pro, you'll see that we do have dense cloud classes. Now, to be honest, I really have no clue what that is, but just something that I wanted to point out. So, pretty much similar functionality and I'm assuming that with both PhotoScan and PhotoScan Pro the algorithm used to generate your point clouds as well as your texture and mesh are going to be identical at least that's my understanding from doing some testing and running this imagery through both programs. Now with that being said the main differences that I've seen are uh, export options and measurement tools so We'll just go up to the Tools menu in PhotoScan Pro. You'll see under Mesh, you can do stuff such as measure area and volume. And you'll notice this number right here. If I plug that into Google and do the conversion to acreage, the calculation comes out to about 13 to 14 acres, which is exactly the area covered when I flew this mission. In a previous video, what I did to export this image is I went to the tools menu and I exported the texture. So you can see I can go in there and export as a JPEG or a TIFF, but in PhotoScan Pro you actually have options to export an orthophoto or a digital elevation model. I'll show you those here in a minute and so just wanted to point out that having this geo-referenced information actually saves you quite a bit of work. You get higher resolution imagery as well as it being ortho rectified. So let me show you the difference in those exports. Now this is the texture export that we did from PhotoScan Standard Edition. You can see it's about 40 megabytes, 4096 by 4096. And let's look at the actual ortho photo that we exported from PhotoScan Pro. You can see that it's 210 megabytes, 11,000 by 10,000 pixels, so definitely a lot higher resolution. We're gonna have more detail there. and Using the GDAL tools, there's a command called GDAL info to get information from your GeoTIFF. This is the texture export. You'll see that there's no coordinate reference system here, but going down to the version that I exported from PhotoScan Pro, you'll see all sorts of coordinate reference information, such as the coordinate reference system, which is this EPSG 4326, as well as your bounding box, your upper left, down to your lower right, GPS coordinates. So 
definitely more information. So this is then orthorectified and we can open it in a GIS program such as QGIS. And here you can see our GeoTIFF exported out of PhotoScan Pro, nicely overlaid onto this Bing aerial image in the background. Now I can't unfortunately pan or zoom just because it really slows down my computer and takes forever to, to load. I wanted to share how nicely that comes out of PhotoScan Pro. Now the other pretty cool thing that you get out of PhotoScan Pro, you'll notice that when we create these sparse and dense point clouds, it actually does this 3D reconstruction. And from that, we can export a digital elevation model. So you can go in here, specify your settings, and export that to a GeoTIFF. This is the digital elevation model out of PhotoScan Pro. Definitely nothing too exciting, but here's where in my opinion, the magic happens. If you bring it into a GIS program, you can see the different shading elements. And what you can do is actually go in and let's say we want to create a contour map. We can do that. We can specify our interval between contour lines. We can specify the elevation. Now, this really doesn't have a whole lot of value unless you've actually mark your ground control points and understand the elevation at different areas. But this definitely gives you a reference and spacing of these contours. So we'll go ahead and save that, hit OK. You can see that it's done. Now if we look at our layers, you can see the contours with 10 meter spacing in between them. I can actually turn off that and we could put a base layer under here of a Google map or a Bing layer as well. So pretty cool stuff that you can do. I'm still really doing a lot of experimentation with the digital elevation model, but it's good to know that it exists. And when I learn more about it, I'll definitely be sharing that with you guys in the future. These are just some of the cool things I've been playing with, with PhotoScan Pro, with some of this aerial imagery that I've been creating and wanted to share it with you. What I also want to offer is if you guys have images that you've taken from a mission and are willing to put them on Dropbox and share them, then let me know. I'd be glad to run this through PhotoScan Pro. I'll do a video and we can kind of collaborate as a community around uh, some of this information. Now I will say that let's make sure that your imagery is not for commercial purposes. So either for educational or research purposes, we can do that been very impressed so far. You've seen me do some stuff with Pix4D. I'll definitely do a comparison between the two, but if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.